guys, in today's video I'm going to show you a super elegant skeleton lady with a very classic updo and it's got a metallic red background. That's one of my favorite colors in from Madame Glam ever. It's the color ruby red from their metallic collection, so it's just so pretty. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do, and don't forget to check out Helen's skeleton, and hers is a very cute version as he's holding on to the underside of the nail for dear life. Or dear death, maybe. I hope you guys like our designs, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin with an overlay of clear acrylic over the, over the top of the entire nail. And so the actually the color that I used for this is a gel line from Adam Glam that I'm absolutely in love with. So this first layer is just for strength and for structure, nothing else. And then I'm going to file that nail into shape with my e-file, make sure that I do leave that structure in place. And then I'm going to apply a layer of Madame Glam's metallic, metallic gel base coat, cure that, and then a layer of their silver metallic base, and then a coat of the color ruby red on top of that and cure that once more. That gives such an amazing, amazing shine to that nail. So then after that has some top coat on it, I'm going to begin sculpting my skeleton lady with some white acrylic. And so I'm going to begin with the silhouette of her face. And I have a few other very similar designs that I've done in the past. I always love doing an elegant skeleton. There's just something so, I don't know, macabre and elegant as something just about it. I just love these. These are like my favorite Halloween designs to do. So I do one almost every single year and I'll put links to my past ones in the description box below and I'm going to definitely recommend if you haven't seen it the one the first skeleton lady that I did is from oh it's been a while like four or five years and I will highly recommend that you watch that one from back then not necessarily because it is so fantastic and it's going to be you know mind opening and earth shattering for you but because it really can show how far you can come in really what doesn't feel like a long time so four to five years in art skill is can be very, you know, can be nothing. That time can just go by and, you know, no improvements are made necessarily. Or if you put in the work and you really, really, you know, work on your art every single day in one way or another, all of a sudden those four or five years will go past and you will look back at your older work and not even recognize it because you have improved so much and you've grown so much as an artist that it's just incredible to go back and look at where you've come from so that's why i recommend that you go back and you look at that one because if you're feeling that oh my goodness you know you can never paint something like somebody else does or sculpt something like somebody else does you don't know what their art was like two years ago four years ago six years ago and so it's always very uh encouraging i think to go back and look at your own art or somebody else's art and really see how quickly progress can be made so that is just a little thing so definitely go check out that video otherwise back to my skeleton lady the great thing with having that really shiny gel top coat background on a design like this is that as you can see i've been pulling those ribs into those nice loops and it's a lot easier to do that on a slippery on working on something slippery like gel top coat or gel sealer so instead of having just like if you would have sculpted a red nail for this particular design i probably would still recommend you top coating it before you do the 3d art just so that you have that nice slippery base to stretch and pull the acrylic on and if you are going to try to stretch and pull your acrylic i'm working with white acrylic which is a sculpture acrylic it's not a 3d acrylic or a dipping powder or a color acrylic different acrylics have a different texture to them but a sculpture acrylic has the best stretchability <laughs> if they want to think of it that way it's got the best pull to it when you're doing these types of shapes so actually having a skeleton that you're sculpting in white for this circumstance is a huge benefit because you have that really nice texture for your acrylic to work with and then you are going to just do all of her hair and for this i'm using a bronze acrylic and you could do whatever color hair you want for her uh, gray I think would be really cool to do like a silvery gray too but whatever color of acrylic you use for her hair if you have one that's a metallic I would recommend doing that especially if you have the metallic background like I do so that her hair does not end up looking dull and lifeless you want her hair to still look really glamorous and really elegant so to give it kind of that elegant updo appearance I'm going to just sculpt the very area around her hairline first but then I'm going to go through and I'm going to actually sculpt like a bun or a couple different twists and little shapes of hair up above that are twisted on her head and to get some texture into the hair you can use the tip of your brush or a silicone tool or a toothpick if you are going to be using something that isn't 
an acrylic product necessarily like a toothpick or a silicone tool dip them into some clear acrylic powder or the bronze color acrylic powder first so that they don't stick i know i've seen a couple people ask on different videos like even on instagram and stuff why you dip your tools in powder first before you use them to either cut acrylic or shape it and that's just so that it won't stick because if it sticks and then you pull it away it's going to like pull the acrylic and it's not going to give you those nice clean lines that you're going for but if you just dip it into some powder every couple every you know every couple minutes then it'll create a little barrier between the tool and the product so that the tool can manipulate the product without getting adhered to it so there's where i'm adding those couple little bun shapes and i'm going to almost use the tip of my brush to carve in a rose type pattern into her hair and then do one more just to fill in that gap just kind of pat it out a few times i don't want to overwork the bronze color because it'll get less metallic and more sparkly looking and i want to try to maintain the metallic quality versus just like a glitter as much as i can and let that set up for just a second and then go back through and create that a similar rose pattern as to the other one just go back and forth with a couple little indents I'm going to see I use a toothpick again. I love, I have that little floss pick in my acrylic tool box and it really works well. But now I'm going to take some acrylic paint and I'm going to be detailing her features. So I'm going to start with a, it's a medium gray and I'm going to be very softly adding some shading on her face. So you don't wanna to do too many harsh lines. You wanna keep her looking really elegant and very sleek. And so you don't wanna do harsh lines where they don't belong. And so for these different little bits of shading, you wanna to try to keep everything really muted. And then with some white paint, I'm going to be adding some highlights. As you can see, I'm blending those out with my little round brush as well. So it's the same thing for these highlights. You don't wanna really make them very intense and harsh. You wanna just keep them very soft and very, just kind of smooth from location to location. Kind of blend those in wherever they need to be. Really make sure that you highlight all of those high points in the bone structure so like her around her eyes and her nose and then her cheekbones for sure and her jawline any of those think of it as like any of the areas that you highlight on your face when you're doing makeup so a lot of times people will highlight their cheekbones and they'll highlight the very tip of their nose and around their eyes and their brow bone so it's the same thing when you're highlighting the skeleton those same areas with black paint you're going to go through and do just a little bit of details and then fill in the different cavities in the skull so nasal cavity eye sockets the little ones for in her cheeks around where her teeth would be and then take that black and do some outlines as well so you're going to outline her teeth and then just do a little couple outlines on the different areas of her skull not too much but just enough to really make them defined and if you want you can continue those outlines down all of her like her spinal bones and her chest that's kind of an optional one i thought they looked really good without and i actually went back and forth whether i thought they needed the little bit of outline and definition and evidently i decided that i would add just a little bit but that's kind of a up to you sort of a thing and then in her hair i'm going to take just a little bit of that black outlining kind of make the different sections of hair and the different twists a little bit more obvious and then i'm going to do a couple little outlines and highlights with gold so i have a metallic gold paint and i'm just going to do some very subtle very soft little highlights here and there I'm not trying to overdo it i'm not trying to paint her hair entirely in gold and make it look like it's gilded or something but just give it some brightness and then apply some matte top coat over mrs skeleton and that is it like i said i've done past skeleton designs and so or lady skeleton designs so i'll put links to those in the description box below as well as the link to helen's video i just i always am a sucker for a beautiful skeleton so i hope you guys like this as much as i do and share recreations with me on facebook or instagram and i will see you next time bye